Hey, everybody, and welcome to Global Badass Goddess, where we aim to empower and inspire. Today, we're speaking with author Bob Doyle, who is best known for teaching law and attraction principles as a featured expert in the film and book, The Secret. He discusses what's really, really makes the biggest difference in a person's ability to create what they want in their lives, whether that's utilizing law of attraction principles or other methods, and why the success rate with personal development is so low. He'll also tell us what we need to do in order to beat those odds and assure your success. Bob's program, Wealth Beyond Reason, teaches you how to tap into your full power of manifestation, giving you tools and techniques that you need to transform your life. So let's transform our lives and welcome Bob. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. And if you saw any of my messing around, I apologize for that all of a sudden, everyone in the world wants to communicate with me. Of course. <laughs> it's the energy. <laughs> We're bringing That's in right. the energy. Yeah. That's right. He's in the flow. Let's listen. That's right. right. That's right. You know, I, I want to start out by saying, I, I just, I love your, your quote. So um, you're getting exactly what you feel about, feel about not so much what you think about. And that's by you. And I really appreciate that, Bob. That's, that's such the truth. You know, um, it's the feeling um, part of, I mean, it's, it's a, you'll talk more about this, but I'm, I'm excited to like really talk to you about this. So um, I just want to start out and ask you a couple of questions um, about making a difference. Like really, where did that, where did that start with you? Like, what was your first step and how did you decide, okay, I'm awake. I want to make a difference. Yes, yes, yes. Well, I certainly, that was not my trajectory. Okay. I always knew growing up that what I wanted to do was be in radio and broadcasting. My dad was on in, in radio and TV and I thought that's it. <laughs> Who, that's it. He just talks and they give him money. So that was really <laughs> what I was about. And I did that for seven years or so, but uh, then it didn't end up being the sort of the creative outlet that I wanted it to be. So I started to, only because I was so early in my career, I couldn't, I didn't have the creative carte blanche at a major market radio station, just do the silly stuff I wanted to do. And that was, I just wanted to be silly and, and entertain. That was since I was a kid. Yeah. So, but then, so now I'm feeling like, oh, well, I guess my dream isn't, it's not going to happen. So what am I going to do? So then I'm jumping around from job to job, but still it was about mostly hiding from people. I, I really wasn't out there to make anybody's life better. I was really just wanted to entertain or whatever, but somewhere in my journey mm. though, I, I hit a, uh, like a health, had a health event which was kind of a wake up call that, hey, I should probably, I don't know, move my body, exercise, do something. And so I went online and got in, in some inspiration there. And to make that long story short, I got really sort of obsessed is really the more accurate word, but with this whole concept of physique transformation, just changing your body using, you know, any number of 12 week programs that were out there. So I learned a lot about nutrition and things like that. And as I started getting my results, this was the first time I had the call to sort of turn around and give back through like a website, the things, the skill sets I had learned over the course of time to, you know, when I was searching for my career path or whatever. Yeah. So now I had the ability to take all that information and put it together into a, a site where I could actually help people by interviewing people who had gone through the process similarly and had results. So it was all about just sharing that information. So that was my first taste of sort of giving back by just learning my own lessons and turning them around. So when the law mm -hmm. of attraction conversation came around, which was later, and that's another whole story, but once that became my focus, uh, and I, again, it was my struggle first. Mm -hmm. And then when I started to get results by having some major aha moments and things like that, then I, again, just sort of turned it around and started giving it back through an early version of the program called Wealth Beyond Reason, which was the one that grew into this sort of law of attraction monster, which Rhonda Byrne later found when she was out looking for people on the internet. So, and, and I think she just, that my voice, which was trying mm -hmm. to be as practical as possible, using as much mm -hmm. science as possible. That was a voice I think that, that she just wanted in there. So there it yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really good. I, I, that film, I think I was connected to, um, law of attraction principles, law of deliberate creation, all that kind of stuff like in 92. And that was passed around on a cassette. And then, and then Rhonda came out with it. And I'm like, 
oh my God, this is amazing. And, and I, I, was, I loved that film. I told everybody about it and you were absolutely stellar. Um, and I love your voice, you have an amazing voice. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was like, oh my God. I just it's didn't like, intend on using it this particular way. Yeah, isn't that crazy? That's, yeah. how, that's how it is sometimes. You, you start down a path and then the next thing you know, if you pay attention to the sign, it's like, oh, I need to go over here. So, well, we're grateful. We're grateful for you doing that. Um, and, um, you know, I was kind of thinking about how we all feel in all of us, but most people feel enslaved by their jobs mm -hmm. and, and not having a life purpose or not really kind of conscious of it or where, you know, um, how does one move through that mindset? Well, I mean, it is, it is all pro one of the things that I'm really realizing now and what my sort of focus is now is just how we're wired, how our brains are wired over the course of our lives and how that wiring affects how we make meaning to, to everything. That is what our reality is created the moment we give meaning to a situation. So that practical aspect of that our brain is at work here and transformation is, if it's going to be lasting transformation, it's not about focusing on trying to have some sort of spiritual or invisible event occur. Ultimately, however you do it, your brain needs to be rewired so that you can be in a different way in the world right. than than the one that you're being because who you're being now is attracted to exactly what you've got if you truly want something different you, that means you're going to have to adjust your being in yeah. some way so that you occur differently in the world and get different results yeah so do you do you connect that with the neural pathways like yes. like rewiring neural pathways you know that's, ex that's exactly what i'm talking about yeah and, and and that's you know i've sort of shifted my focus 20 years i've been talking about vibration and sort of the more woo woo stuff, yes, but so still terrible. trying to try to put some yes. And, and while I'm passionate about it in that, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I know that it's a thing. I also know that people as much as they want to believe it still struggle with it. It's, it's yeah. like it's invisible. It's still like, oh, I'd love to be spiritual enough to truly believe this or embrace this. So instead, I'm going to spend 10 years trying this and that technique and chasing the law of attraction result. And I'm saying that it doesn't matter and you don't have to believe it and you don't have to focus on it at all. There are other ways to change your brain wiring, but that is what's going to happen. And so the very first step is when you learn about the law of attraction or anything like that is not, it should not be, but is for most people. Yeah. What do I want? The things, the stuff, how much money, the person, the, the car, all the stuff, because you're trying to create that from who you're being now. Let's first decide who you want to be in the world. Like what's the more empowered version, the fearless version, the more impassioned version, the more creatively expressed version, the more abundant version. What does that look and feel like? Create that first. Yeah. And when you can embody that and start that, start creating that wiring, those neural pathways on a consistent basis, and it must yeah. be consistent, you know, then all new things are possible. Yeah. Well, where, Bob, where do you think people should start? Like, what if, what if you're just, you're like at a job and you're just kind of doing your thing and you don't, you know, maybe there's some things that have popped up like, oh, I've always wanted to do X, you know, um, and, but they're afraid to do that. How, what step do they take? I mean, cause all the other stuff is just like icing on a mud pie kind of yeah. stuff, you know, so until you get there. First of all, they have to understand that, of course, they're going to be scared. And of course, they don't know how to do it. They haven't been training themselves. They haven't been wiring themselves for this. Mm -hmm. So that feeling of overwhelm, and I don't know how I would ever do that is totally normal. And too many people take it to mean, I guess the universe doesn't want it for me because I'm not right. getting some sort of clear sign or whatever. No, that's not it at all. I mean, you get to change all of that, that feeling, but that but just know that that's natural. So you have to, if you're in a job and you're not liking it, but you have a vision for yourself. Trust me, spending 30 minutes a day focusing on it is not going to do it. Why? Because there's 23 and a half other hours in the day where you're letting the automatic pilot run every one of your decisions and meaning making. And you totally. justify it because you can totally. point to all this evidence over the course of your time. And then you go home and you meditate and you wonder why the law of attraction isn't working. It's because you're not, you have to be it is be, do, have. Yes. It's not have do. the other way. It's yeah. be, be, <laughs> yeah. There's a reason for that. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. Yeah. And, you know, the, the ancients have talked about it for millennia, you know, about that too. So, yeah, uh, that's, I was just, yeah, I was wondering about that just because, you know, I have a lot of people, they're just like afraid to like step forward, just like, yeah. okay, I, I kind of know what I want to do, but like, 
but I've got, they got all these reasons, right? So beyond. <laughs> fear is so, the greatest gift. It's the gift. It says you're up against your wiring. You have the reason that you're feeling fear. The reason that you're feeling uncomfortable discomfort is simply a biological thing. Yeah. Your neuro pathways are not programmed for this new way of thinking and being, but they can be. You just have to start like for years, you've been unconsciously feeding your brain information and you've been reaffirming. Yeah facts that are made up and not true at all, but, but based on your evidence. And now you're wondering why it's difficult to think differently. Well, because this is the machine you've been given, but you, because we have the gift of consciousness and awareness, we're not at the mercy of it. We can get conscious, detach from the automatic wiring. If even for a moment and go, this is my wiring, this is not the truth. Yeah. And in that moment of being that present is when you can start to choose other actions to take. So how do you know what those actions are? Well, you get to play with them in your imagination beforehand. That's what your brain is for. You get to visualize the future. You get to build in your mind, who do I want to be? And you can rehearse it and rehearse it in your everyday scenario first in your mind and then try it on. But ultimately yeah. that's what's going to get you the results. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're totally right. It's like, you have to practice it too. And you can't, you can't get beyond that. You can't. <laughs> Because you're practicing every, you're practicing all the time. You're practicing right? the way you've been being on autopilot. That's how you're so freaking good at it, <laughs> exactly. right? You practice con nonstop. Yeah. So now you have to, pra and that's, and it's, so that's why it's, it's transformation is not this instant thing, but it's worth it. Just like every other thing you learned in your life that was difficult, like learning to walk and talk and all of those things, you know, right. if we approached those things, like we approached personal development, we'd all just be rolling around on the floor right. because we would have given up with the universe doesn't want it for me. I've fallen like 20 times, Yeah. but that's how we think as adults. And a lot of it is because of, of the personal development industry. Yeah. Well, it's, that, it's that superstition thing. You don't want to like hook, you know, you have people, oh, well, I've fallen. So that's not, you know, I shouldn't be doing that. You know, it's like outside yes. yourself. Like, well, that this is where we get in. This is where sometimes spirituality and, and uber spiritualism gets into trouble because we make up just these strange rules of spirituality because they're invisible and they can explain something that's really comes down to a lack of action or a lack of commitment or whatever. I mean, it really, it is all energy and stuff, but people hide behind that and, yeah. and use it as an excuse for why they're not going for their dream or whatever it is. And, right. and in that case, it's not, it's just not serving them. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, I, oh, I kind of want to go a little bit onto the right here a little bit for a second um just kind of finding out more about you like what do you love about your work like, like what is it that's just re that really inspires you about your work honestly so mm -hmm. it, my favorite part about the work that i do in general is mm -hmm. that it has become my form of creative self-expression because when i do live streams and things like that i get to play with a lot of stuff and I get to do a lot of voices. I get to do a lot. I get, I get to do a lot of things that I got into radio to do in just mm. being who I am out in the world right now. Now, not all of it is specifically Bob Doyle teaching law of attraction principles, yeah. but I am out there in lots of ways. The Bob Doyle show is something that I do. That's just, it's just silly and entertainment yeah. or whatever. <laughs> Every now and then I may talk about, you know, it may leak in, but like, I'm just putting myself out there and yeah. this and all the different things I do. Yeah. afford me the ability to do that. So I've just found my way to, to be an entrepreneur on my terms, still get to do everything I like to do. I'm not typical. I'm not like, you know, Bob Proctor or Jack Canfield or John Asraf or any of those right. other people who, who, who play this personal development on a whole different level. And they've been doing it long since before I have, and it's their main focus. Yeah. And, and this is a focus for my, of mine for sure. I mean, the secret happened. It was unavoidable. And I enjoy it. And it, I do love making an impact. And I do like seeing people's lights go on and having aha moments. And a lot of that's happening since we started yeah. talking about rewiring because yeah. people, you can point to the science and say, yeah, this is for real, this isn't a theory that we all just know in our hearts. It's, it's right here. And that yeah. helps a lot of people. Yeah, it does. And I think it reaches more people actually. And I, I love that you have a practical approach um, because, you know, I, I'm, I consider myself a, an awake spiritual being and I've been there for a while. And, you know, it's, I, I see a lot of people that I know go down paths where you're just like, yeah, but you're not, you're not actually creating what you want. You're not actually stepping forward. You know, it takes, it takes something to just say, 
okay, I'm just going to try this. I'm, you know, I'm just going to go beyond all my fears and just go for it, yeah. you know? And then, like you said, you, with that, then you got to practice it. You know, you can't just, it's not going to just magically yes. happen. Yeah. Deciding who you are or your purpose or your, you know, who am I supposed to be should not be this years long thing because you get to decide. Yeah. You get to decide and you can change, yeah. you can change it many times in your lifetime. And I promise you, you have, we are not yeah. the same person we were 10 years ago or 10 years before that, or 10 years before that we've been molded Completely. by our environment a lot. You know, a lot of it is on autopilot, but we don't think the same way. And I know that there's periods in the, in your past where you can look back and go, how did I ever think that was okay? Or how did I ever believe what, but at the time it was yeah. all you could see. That was the truth. And that right. just shows you that truth is this impermanent subjective thing, mm -hmm. which is actually very freeing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, <laughs> and it allows for you to be very tolerant of other people. When you understand that they're not just being jerks, Yeah, they, they see through a very different lens, different than lens. You, that is, that is that they didn't create to piss you off. It's yeah. just how they see things. And you and, and so trying to get somebody to change their brain because you want them to is never going to work. You know, people have to be inspired into change. Exactly. Yeah. And be, be, <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, but be the change you want to be. I mean, you, you know, if you do it yourself, people look at you and go, how do they do that? That's inspiring. Let's right. do, I want to do my thing. You know, I, I just, I love that, Bob. You're so great. You're so Well, that's welcome. why, I, thank you. Well, it's yeah. just why the, there's this prosperity or lack, whatever, in the spiritual community where it's this, this weird thing about being successful. Yeah. And I mean, and, and some, a lot of spiritual people have totally gotten over it for sure, yeah. but other people are still in that conversation, but it's just this way that they, and I'm not saying this is a blanket statement, obviously, however, being in this industry and seeing this so often, I see a lot of people settling yeah. in the name of spirituality. And it's really just because they're scared to take that next level, to see themselves as, as having a bigger impact than just maybe their little, you know, private practice over here where they help 20 people in a month where they could be helping thousands and they know it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's right there and they choose not to step up and, yeah. and it's not, Again, it's no judgment on my part because I have no idea what they're really feeling, if they're tolerating, or if they're perfectly happy. But I do know from being on the receiving end of coaching clients that this is definitely an issue out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing, right? Whether you're spe teaching spiritual principles or you're doing, you know, work down the street at the corporation or whatever, it's the same thing. It's like we get seduced and fearful of letting go what maybe is outmoded or, you oh, know, yeah. or just, or just trying to expand and evolve because we evolve, right. you know, that's like denying that, well, I'm the same person. No wonder people are tortured. <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't take, it takes nothing for an individual yeah. to look out in the world and see that risk pays off, that you don't just get the thing right after one time, five times, 10 times, 200 times. It takes as long as it takes. If you're committed, you keep going till it's done. We would yeah. have no light bulb. We'd have no nothing if people approached technology the way they approach their own personal <laughs> development. So true. Oh my God. Great point. <laughs> It's oh just, but that's the paradigm. It's the paradigm that we have somehow been programmed with. That's like, it needs to take this amount of time or you need this program or you need this guru or whatever it is. We've just been so programmed for limitation that most yeah. of the work that we have as coaches is, is really just identifying the, that this tangled yeah. mess that, that, that people have convinced themselves is the truth. Yeah. And it's tricky because it, to them, it's their truth. So you have to be very you know, you gotta be, you have to be sensitive to that when you're trying to help people see their yeah. truth in a different way, but it starts yeah. with them being inspired to, to you know, to seeing how it's not sure. serving them. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's not from the outside in, it's from the inside out. And I think that's what everyone's coming, hopefully to understand that, you know, where we go, there you are, you know, and that's, it starts here, you know, it's, it's really here and rewiring and re-envisioning and, being brave enough to just step out and go, I don't care. I'm going to be myself. I'm yeah. going to do this. You yeah. know, it, it really all is 100% out here. And, and all of that out there is just <clears throat> stuff for you to make meaning out of. 
And, and there's <laughs> right. other people who will look at the same thing and make completely different meaning out of it. So don't worry so much about it. it's the truth. How can you how can you create meaning in your life out of the situation that is your life so that it's empowering to you, that it moves you forward? If you're yeah. pissed about something, instead of brooding about it and just being pissed and sitting in those chemicals, what action can you take to change the situation? And if there is no action you can take, I invite you to let go of it. Let go of the anger because you're poisoning yourself so that you can be right about something, which is a very man-made thing that's so right. freaking important, you know, and it, there's, again, no truth to it. And it's certainly, as people will know who are played with this, needing to be right all the time, mm -hmm. they realize that it's at what cost? Relationships, yeah. friendships, the pleasure of a moment that just means nothing. It's nothing. all about the chemical, that jolt that we get when we are right about it, no matter how much the rest of the chemistry is crappy and makes us feel bad and has so much fallout. It's, that's how addictive that this, it, it really comes down to this chemistry. We get addicted to our chemistry and we get addicted to that comfortable feeling and we love those highs. We try to avoid the lows and it, it's just this, chem, it, this chemistry set that we get to control with our thoughts and our emotions and how we make meaning of things. So if we don't like the chemistry that's going on in there, it's because we're giving toxic meaning to situations which yeah. we may or may not be able to have any control over. And that is a choice that we make each of us in the moment. Yeah, and that helps us stay stuck in that same cycle over and feeling and over justified and yeah. at being stuck. At being stuck. Yeah. It's so they argue for it, it stays more true. Absolutely, it is. Totally. Yeah, no, I'm with you. And it's not easy. I mean, it's it's a practice, you know, like you have to catch yourself every day, be conscious, be present, you know, bring it back, it's, bring it back. It is not, it's the hardest thing ever because especially mm -hmm. if you're just trying to do it by yourself, which a lot of people, you know, I guess they watched The Secret or whatever and thought they were going to be this one man show of manifesting. <laughs> yeah. But but right. it is important that when you, especially when you understand the brain and that you do reach the limits of your wiring and you only know what you know, and, and that's all you're going to be able to rationalize or think through. So when you're stuck, if you don't get help from someone else, if you yeah. don't get enough, then you're going to stay stuck. And in fact, you'll probably start to say, well, I've been stuck so long. I guess this is the limit, yeah. you know, and then you just start to retract. So this is about seeking support, whether it's from a coach or whether it's a group of somebody, somebody else. Yeah. See you for in a way that you can't, or at least help you to reframe different situations. So you yeah. can gain some momentum in this new way of thinking. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Yeah. So wealth beyond reason. Um, you have a wonderful program and are you still doing private coaching or group coaching or yeah, workshops the, or anything? So yes, sporadically, we're getting ready to launch our boundless living challenge, which is pretty much sort of a 45 day immersion into everything that we're talking about. Wonderful. It is a, it is a heck of a commitment for people because it's every day, because this, I'm telling you, you know, that if you don't do it every day, it's just not going to stick. Yeah. So it's that kind of thing, but it is giving you the support and the distinctions and all the little ahas and the tools to help, you know, get through the resistance piece. That's, that's mm. going to start. I don't know exactly when this is going out, but March of 2021 is when we're looking to launch that and people can join at any time. So that's, that's probably the best way I do offer private coaching, but it's, you know, it's definitely at higher levels and I need to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one right that whole thing. Yeah. I do have a coaching organization. So there's lots of different ways. If people want to, to have experience with this stuff, it just depends on whether it has to be me or whether it can be a trained coach. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Well, I'm going to, I know I'm going to wrap this up a little bit here, but I have a few more questions. <laughs> so finish the sentence. If I could. If I could. If I could. Play the ukulele all day long. That's what I would do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, and what, if you had a superpower, what would it be and why? Uh, that's so weird because I play in virtual reality so much that I feel like I already have embodied every superpower I can imagine. Flying is a ton of fun. And I think one of the nice things about that flying thing is not just the whole Superman aspect, but it just gives you this amazing perspective. So there's mm -hmm. a there's a VR app called Google Earth where you can basically literally fly anywhere in the world and see it in 3D as far up as you want. And it I'm telling you, it will change you on a fundamental level. So I guess if I had to choose one of the, you know, the popular ones, I'd go with flying. flying. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And um, if you wouldn't mind, leave us with an inspirational words of wisdom or a quote or anything that you'd love to leave us with. I just if you can. If anybody watching this or listening to this can take on this practice, just begin this practice of when they get 
into a situation that may be very familiar to them and they get triggered in a very familiar way and it doesn't feel good, I invite you to just have the thought, this is my wiring, this is not the truth. Gotcha. And at first it's gonna be challenging and you won't wanna do it ever again because it'll be so challenging the first time. But it's all about this, if you're gonna change this, awareness is the first step. So if you can, when you're triggered, and I know that when the chemicals are going strong, you just don't wanna stop, that's the nature of them. But if you, can, if you can do that, if you can start overriding, that's a really powerful skill. And it's real simple, this is not, this is my wiring, this is not the truth. And then you're going to do whatever you're going to do, but at least that little pattern interrupt can start the process. Great. Thank you so much, Bob. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your being, and I'm very grateful to have met you and have experienced your work. So thank you so much. I appreciate the you. opportunity to share. Yes. All right. So thanks everybody. And we'll be back with, a. Uh, Bob, hopefully in the future, uh, to talk more about things and um, stay tuned and we've got more for you in the future. All right. Thanks everybody for showing up. All right. Bye.